Have you ever had trouble with elements overflowing or resizing oddly in CSS? Do you want an easy way to make responsive layouts? Well, in this video, I'll show you how to use CSS Flexbox to create a perfect web design. What is Flexbox? Flexbox is a simple way to arrange items in rows or columns. With just a few lines of code, you can create clean and responsive layouts. It also helps solve common problems, like centering a div or making a website fit all screen sizes. In this video, we'll learn how to position elements anywhere – top, bottom, left, right, center, or in between. And of course, we'll answer a big question – how do you center a div? Let's get started. In HTML, we have five div boxes with basic CSS styles. To align them using Flexbox, we need to style the parent element. So we set the Flex container to display Flex. Notice how the boxes move from stacking vertically to sitting side by side. Let's add a border to see the Flexbox layout more clearly. The most important concept in Flexbox is the two axes. Main axis controls the main direction of items. Cross axis controls the perpendicular direction. To position elements along the main axis, we use the justify content property. It has three main values. Flex start, the default value, aligns items to the left. Flex end, moves them to the right. Center, places them in the middle. With just two lines of CSS, we can center elements horizontally. Now let's center the items vertically by considering the cross axis. First, we increase the height of the flex container by setting minimum height to 500 pixels. Now, we can clearly see the frame of our flexbox layout. To center items on the cross axis, we use align items property. It works the same way as justify content with these values. Flex start aligns items at the top. Flex end moves them to the bottom. Center places them in the center. To center elements both horizontally and vertically, you only need three simple lines of CSS. Since Flexbox is flexible, this layout stays centered no matter how much you change the width or height of the container. Besides center, the justify content and align items properties have three additional values. Space between spreads elements from left to right, with the first and last item touching the edges space around, adds equal space on both sides of each element, but the gaps between elements are slightly larger than the space at the edges. Space evenly makes all spaces equal, creating a perfectly balanced layout. With Flexbox, these spaces adjust automatically when the container resizes, making layouts more responsive. By the way, you can also use these values for align items, but since we only have one row of elements, they would just stay at the top of the cross axis for now. You'll see how they work when layouts get more complex. Now, let's move on to another important Flexbox property, Flex Direction. The Flex Direction property controls the direction of the main axis. By default, it is set to row, meaning elements are arranged from left to right. However, we can change this direction in different ways. Row Reverse moves the main axis from right to left instead of left to right. The numbering of elements flips, so the first item starts on the right. This also affects justify content, meaning flex start moves to the right and flex end moves to the left. Column changes the main axis to go from top to bottom, placing elements on top of each other instead of side by side. We use align items, center, to center elements horizontally. It's important to remember the flex direction of your layout because it changes how other properties work. By default, Flexbox uses row, which aligns items side by side. But when you want elements stacked vertically, you should use column. Flex gap. Start with display flex. The gap property creates space between items without using margins. Add a gap of 30 pixels to our boxes, and now all items have 30 pixels space between them. Flex wrap. The flex wrap property makes your flexbox layout responsive with just one line of code. You can set it to either wrap or no wrap. With flex wrap, items move to the next line when space is limited, making the layout responsive. Resizing the window shows how elements flow to the next line. With flex no wrap, all items stay in one line and shrink if needed to fit. 
to center the layout horizontally with Justify Content Center and vertically with Align Item Center, we might notice a large gap between rows when adding more boxes. The Flexbox layout will automatically manage the spacing. When using FlexWrap, each line has its own main and cross axis, instead of one main and one cross axis. In this case, we have three axes. Flex start places boxes at the start of each cross axis, flex end at the end, and center in the center. Now, we need another CSS property to align all lines together. We use align content, which defaults to space around, causing big gaps. You can change this to space between, space evenly, or use basic values like flex start, flex end, and center. The difference is, Align Items controls the alignment of each Flexbox line individually along the cross axis, while Align Content controls all lines together. For a perfectly centered layout in Flexbox, use all of this three properties and wrap the elements automatically when needed. You can split the gap property into row gap and column gap to set different values for horizontal and vertical gaps. For example, set column gap to 10 pixels and row gap to 20 pixels. However, you usually won't need this and can just use the normal gap property for both. These properties are not so important in Flexbox. For beginners, here's a challenge. How would you center the numbers inside the boxes, which are currently at the top left? Pause the video and try it yourself. The answer is simple. Set the box selector to display flex, justify content center for the main axis, and align items center for the cross axis. This centers the numbers inside the boxes. You can use flex start and flex end combinations. Now let's explore a powerful feature in Flexbox. You can resize elements responsively without wrapping them in Flexbox. Start with five boxes. In CSS, use only display flex and gap 10 pixels. Without flex wrap, boxes resize when the viewport shrinks. This is controlled by flex shrink, applied to flex items, not the container. Set flex shrink to zero inside the boxes to prevent shrinking and overflow. If elements overflow, use Flexbox to wrap them or enable flex shrink with a value of one for automatic shrinking. Flex shrink of one is the default. With flex shrink, boxes resize automatically. Currently, all boxes have the same flex shrink value because they use the same class. However, you can assign different values to each item. For example, in HTML, Give the first box an ID box 1 to style it differently. In CSS, set this box's flex shrink to 0. If all elements have a flex shrink of 1, they will shrink except the first one, which will remain the same. Use this to prevent specific elements from shrinking, like images or icons. Flex Grow is useful for making elements stretch along the main axis. When you set Flex Grow to 1, all flex items try to fill the empty space in their parent element. If there's more space, the elements grow larger. Flex Grow aims to fill all available space, and you can specify different grow behaviors for individual elements. If the flex grow for the boxes is zero, they can't grow. However, box number one can grow, resulting in only the first element expanding. This is useful for making websites responsive. Flex Grow and Flex Shrink are not just on-off switches, they also act as multipliers. You can assign numbers higher than one. They make sense only when compared to each other. Give the boxes a flex grow of one and the first box a flex grow of three. This means all boxes can grow, but the first one grows three times faster. It will be larger, but all can potentially grow. You can use different grow values to control how much empty space they fill. Initially, they are all the same size, but when new space is available, the first box will take three times more than the others. You can use Flex Shrink to make the first box shrink three times faster than the other. Set different Flex Grow and Flex Shrink values for each element. Flex Shrink Flex elements can shrink to a minimum width of 80 pixels. Avoid overflow by setting a minimum width. Remember, Flex Shrink and Flex Wrap can't be combined with just a media query. When the screen shrinks and the element overflows due to minimum width, apply Flex Wrap to let it wrap to the next line. This makes a website responsive. Use Flex Shrink until you don't want it to shrink anymore, then use Flex Wrap. Align Self. The Align Self property in Flexbox applies to individual flex items. For example, 
If a line items is flex start, you can change the first box to align self flex end. This aligns only the first box at the flex end, while others remain at flex start. You can also use center. This property allows different alignment on the cross axis, but there's no similar property for the main axis. If justify content is flex end and you want the first item to be flex start, justify self might seem logical for the main axis.